I, I wanted to put this, I'm not a Toronto Maple Leaf fan, although I live really? just outside of Toronto. <laughs> I think anybody who lived since the 60s has a hard time being a Leaf fan, but uh, I thought this was great. I saw this the other day, and, it, and it's, it's so true. You know, if you're a Leaf fan, they haven't won the, the Stanley Cups in 66, so um, I want them as pallbearers so they can let me down one last time. <laughs> so we're here talking about acupuncture, and acupuncture is, is something that is a little bit foreign, and yet at the same time it's also frowned upon, I guess, by what we would call conventional medicine today. I heard somebody mention it from the, the Northwest, and I remember hearing reports that you couldn't even use a rife microscope because it was considered to be voodoo medicine. I mean, like, it's a microscope, for goodness sakes. How much harm can it possibly do? But, um, you know, that is sort of typical. So acupuncture points are points on the skin, or some would say under the skin, usually located on meridians where the circulation of chi can be manipulated, okay? So when we talk about acupuncture or AMA testing, we're not manipulating, but, but there are ways that you can actually influence the, that energy to increase or decrease. In the traditional Chinese medicine concept, we, we talk about excessive and deficient energy. Okay, I don't know if that, that rings a bell for anybody. But when we're talking about AMA testing, what we're measuring for, as he mentioned, is inflammatory or degraded conditions. Same thing, excessive energy, deficient energy. And you can get a good indication of that meridian system as to what is going on um, based on that information. So by stimulating an acupuncture point on the skin through pressure, suction, heat, or needles, injection, uh, I'm sorry, insertion, uh, the circulation of chi is affected, which in turn affects related internal organs. But this is not the only way to take advantage of meridian system. Okay, so there are other methodologies that can be used, but uh, the radiant energy flow uh, also carries with it information about internal organs that can be used to diagnose, used in diagnosis. This is the basis of acupuncture meridian assessment, so we're, that's what we're, we're here to talk about. Device used for measuring electrical resistance polarization at acu uh, acupuncture points and meridians. Through these safe skin level measurements, it is possible to analyze the bioenergetic and bioinformation uh, produced by internal organs and systems. Okay. So, again, hopefully what I'm giving you right now is, is uh, AMA or EAV or EDS. I don't know if a lot of Americans call it electrodermal screening. Just another term used. But AMA, what I like about Simon's system is, is that he's really moved it into an area where it's not, it's focused. You know, he's, he's focused what it is that you're trying to do, what the, the desired outcome is. We are truly on the verge of an incredibly unique time in human history in every area of human endeavor and then no less so in health and medicine. A revolution in thinking and behavior is taking place. <clears throat> well, at this moment, not everyone can appreciate these changing patterns and the new opportunities that are available to us. Your being here today, to me, is really the leading edge, okay? Uh, Simon's done this, I think, at least three years now, but the people that seek out this type of information, really, you're on the leading edge, and, and I applaud you for that and, and really encourage you to you know, keep moving that direction. The next 20 years, we feel, will witness an, up, uh, an unprecedented new resonance. Oh, I can't even talk. You, that renaissance? Renaissance. <laughs> resonance stuck in my head. Uh, for the advancement of mankind in every level, we are witnessing the blending, integration, and synthesis of many concepts, methods, philosophies, and cultures of health and medicine, which have as their common goal the solution of the, of the problems presented by the human illness and disease. You know, for too many years, we haven't really been saying, you know, what's the cause and how do we get there? You know, we've just sort of, we've been symptom driven. And, you know, that's really got to change. And I believe you folks are, are on that leading edge. As I mentioned, AMA, EDS, EAV, it goes by many terms. I think Simon's absolutely right. You're much better off to use AMA because if you use EDS or EAV, uh, the hounds will, will start sniffing because that's what they do. They don't know why, but that's what they do, okay? Um, so it's energetic assessment of individual, uh, of an individual, a quick non-invasive screening method of determining health balancing, imbalances. It is used mainly as a powerful tool for prevention, testing, uh, drugs, and other remedies. It is um, a complement to all other standard testing procedures in common use. Really think of your 
AMA device, your EAV device, as a tool. It is absolutely nothing more than a tool. You're still the one in, that's driving it, okay? Um, and you'll be able to do things with that tool that'll give you information and you'll still be making your own determination. It's not the device. The device isn't going to tell you what to do. Okay. We know in, in this field there have been a lot of devices put on the market that says, you know, put your hands here, your feet here, put something on your head, and I'm going to tell you everything about your history. Well, most of those devices will ask you for two bits of information, your birth year and your, your sex. Okay. With those two bits of information, just based on a bell curve, you can be right 80% of the time. So you don't need to do a diagnosis. You just need to fit who they are into the bell curve. And that's, unfortunately, that's the results that are being given out. And even in, in Baden-Baden, I looked at a lot of devices that um, absolutely told us, you know, this is the greatest thing. Some even had an imprint on a ball that you put your hand into. I mean, that's cool, but it's not doing anything. You know, so you people with a device, by adding a current into the system, into the meridian <laughs> system, you can influence what is happening in that body. You can actually measure what is happening in that body. So you're still the one in, that's in the driver's seat. And I think that is so important that you understand that you're the one doing the work. General health conditions that can be ameliorated or completely treated using, and again, we have to be careful with a completely treated, uh, using this type of is, is chronic uh, health conditions, inflammatory degenerative conditions, again, excessive deficient, uh, balanced body energy, uh, diagnosis of latent burden, vaccine damages, or toxins. So these are the things that you're going to be able to, to determine. And what I love about EAV um, is the fact that when you're doing an assessment of somebody, you're doing it right now. You're not taking some blood or whatever and, and sending it off to a lab and waiting till it's dead and getting it analyzed. You're doing it right now. So, you know, that's one of the beauties of, of uh, even the dark field microscope where you can actually see live. That's one of its strengths. Being able to read it properly is, is the next problem, I suppose. But uh, in the same thing with AP, you can test a person absolutely at this moment and dynamically test them at this moment, test them in an hour's time, 10 hours time, 20 hours time, and get different readings depending on where they are in the day. When you're doing your testing, for example, if you test someone in the morning, quite often their energy level is higher. You test them after a full work day and their energy level will be lower. So there's, there's ways of adapting for that. Um, I also believe, you know, if you're testing somebody, ask them not to drink coffee before you test them because it will raise their energy level. It will raise their readings. Uh, 50 is considered to be average or, or normal. I've never met an average or normal person. We don't exist. We're all somewhere around 50. And 50 was absolutely arbitrary, decided by Vol that this would be where it's going to be, because as Simon said, you can't measure between 1 and 600,000. So you, you, know, you choose a scale between 0 and 100, and Vol said this is the average. I have a theory, and, and it's purely a theory, that in Vol's day, people were a little less energetic than we are today. I think we're charged much higher now. We're living inside of cell towers now. We're living inside of TV, radio towers. We're living inside of so much energy. Uh, our bodies are charged a little higher. So I find that most people read higher than 50. The other thing I notice is that I tend to be higher in energy than most people. Don't know why. Maybe it's to deal with the cold in the north, something like that. Uh, but I will influence people's readings to be higher. If you get someone calm like Simon, he might read the same person as me and be four or five points lower than I am. Doesn't matter because, again, it's, he's using the tool to get his bit of information. I'm using the tool to get my bit of information, and I'm able to take that information and make an assessment from there. Okay? So don't. Don't be fearful. Don't be expecting to find 50s. Don't worry about it if you don't find 50s. Don't worry about it if you happen to be a caffeine drinker and you happen to influence the other person to, to increase. Simon does something. He wears a glove to try and minimize that influence. I have a, he would say an erroneous theory, but I believe that once I'm within five feet of you or even I'm going to be a lot closer, I'm going to affect you anyhow. So uh, all in what you're comfortable with. Um, some Germans like to wear two latex gloves. Yeah. Sure. You know, but as I say, in my opinion, they're still going to influence them. 
Um, so the other things that you can test for, of course, geopathic stress, allergies, food intolerances, uh, parasites, viruses, and bacteria, uh, pain therapy, and remedies for treatment compatibility. The last one I think is, is quite important. Uh, strengths of this method is fast, reliable diagnosis and treatment method, painless, non-invasive, and with outside effects. And that's probably, again, one of the nicest things is that you, it doesn't have any side effects. It's fast, it's versatile. Um, he did it in the field in Bolivia, for goodness sakes, you know, because most of these small devices are battery powered. Um, quick estimation of all organs and tissues, reliable method of detecting latent infections and other pathogens. Okay. Uh, it's great technology for prevention. Uh, during measurements, some uh, preconditions that could lead to tumor formation can be identified. And again, because you're testing the person right at this time, you can get a reading now. We don't have to wait until it has actually formed in order to notice that the system is out of balance. So th that in itself is a great tool that you're not having to wait and say, oh yeah, you know, you do have cancer. Well, you're heading that way because you can measure and you can, you can know that energetically the person is heading in that direction. Um, remedy testing, including remedies and compatibility and their suitability of dosage. Again, you saw how he was doing it with the plate. You can introduce anything into it. And that the whole thing actually was very serendipitous. It actually happened when Vol was working with his new device one day and he went in and had his medication in his pocket and noticed that his readings were different. So then they actually, in the early days, used to get people to hold the medication to see how it affected them. And then they realized, well, wait a second, we can actually put it into the circuit. So when you have a plate on top or a honeycomb beside, whatever it may be, you're able to put that substance into the circuit and actually measure it as it's, you know, affecting the individual. Uh, offer a variety of different treatments, including biofeedback. Again, that's getting into another level of uh, therapy. Um, this is testing, uh, AMA is testing, biofeedback or bioresonance and those type of things, that is, is therapy. Uh, it's based on ancient proven mod uh, modality uh, of traditional Chinese medicine. Okay. Helps patients and doctors build confidence and better visualize the meridians, uh, the cause and effects of health conditions. Um, Simon's charts, I believe you print those out for your patients? Yeah, so you can actually hand them a, a copy of, of what's going on. To do that type of chart, you do need to get into the more sophisticated devices. You do, do need to spend some thousands of dollars to get there so that you can do all those things. Um, we had a discussion this morning, Robert and I, is, is you know, do you start people off walking or running? And, and like Robert says, he can, he can get people running right away. It's not, not a problem. Um, I sometimes think that for some people, if it's too much to take in, you know, you're going to get a device, you're going to get software, and you're going to get da, 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 da. Too often I find that practitioners will spend the big money and then let it collect dust. Well, there's nothing worse than a $10,000 or $15,000 boat anchor. Okay, so sometimes it's better to spend, uh, I see there's four devices there. I actually brought three more devices. Uh, I just brought them in from Germany because uh, last year I found out about them and, and this year they were still available for me. Um, they're basic M1 units and uh, normally the basic M1 is about $1,600 now and these ones are $1,200. So they had three left, I grabbed them and I have them here with me. If anybody wants, it's a good deal. But that's, that's the sales side of things. <laughs> Okay, uh, increases client numbers, uh, thus uh, increasing a patient's income, or practitioner's income. Uh, and again, you know, maybe that's not what we're here to talk about, but that is an, a reality that you can actually, um, as Simon has become popular, people are flying in from all over the country because of what he does. Training is fast, uh, you can learn it within two to four days. Uh, devices are easy to use even by practitioners with no traditional Chinese medicine. You don't have to know the Meridian system, but you're going you're gonna to learn it. You're going to get to know it. Okay. Practitioners can produce custom-tailored um, allopathic or homeopathic remedies during the treatment session. Uh, and uh, again, that's with other devices that you can do that. You can actually, with a, an MR or a Retech from the kindling side or with an Avatar or Mora, you can actually produce remedies. Um, sounds you know, kind of Star Wars, but it, it's absolutely doable. Recognizing that everything is energy, including the remedies, they're all energy as well, okay? Um, the concept of homeopathy, 
You know, I've seen countless CBC or Canadian productions and American productions of how homeopathy has to be impossible because there's no substance left. But there is information from the DNA that's left, and that's really what the homeopaths are working on. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but before Big Pharma really took over, up until 1920, 80% of practitioners were homeopaths. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it's not, you know, it's, it, I guess we shouldn't throw the baby out of the bathwater, but Simon has a, a method of using allopathic remedies very, very effectively. You know, you don't hear of him talking about how he's going to put people on something for a lifetime. He talks about how he's going to use it to, you know, create a result, to influence the body to make the change that he wants. Um, it plays a very important role in prevention. Five, five, five minutes, okay. I don't even know where I am. Uh, <laughs> potential disorders in very early stage. Uh, meridian energy flow also carries with it information about internal organs that can be used in diagnosis of spaces. Is the basis of acupuncture meridian assessment the device used? Uh, works by measuring electrical resistance, polarization at the acupuncture point, and meridians. So these safe skin level measurements, it is possible to analyze the bioenergetic and bioinformation produced by internal organs and systems. So d using, um, and I had, that's where I recognized I was in the wrong slide presentation. Uh, I say this is not really strange uh, science. This is stuff that's being done all the time. It's just not done the way that we're doing it. Here's the fundamentals of what a, uh, an AMA or an EAV device is. It's basically, it's a voltmeter, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to introduce 2.7 volts into that person's body. They hold an electrode to ground and you use a positive probe to whatever point you want to work on and you're just putting a current through that body. The body's going to either allow the current through easily or not or when that current is introduced and it's challenging that system, we may get a drop. As Simon said, that drop, how you use that information is entirely up to your, your scope of practice. But that's it. It's, it's not really strange science. It's, it's fairly straightforward, simple. So we place the subject in an open circuit with the subject holding the ground wire. A painless voltage, 2.7 volts, is introduced uh, into the series. The circuit is closed and the positive probe is touched to the acupuncture point. That's it. That's, you know, the basics of what you're doing. So don't fear it at all. You're not doing anything that's really invasive. It's very, very, very simple. Uh, AMA device acts as a system used by practitioners to confirm their diagnosis of which points and therefore which organs are diseased. It can also be used to make uh, quite valuable measurements as slight differences in the charge of the point indicate different types of disease process. And again, that's what Simon is, is going to get to. Um, I talked about the arbitrary scale with Vol, that it's, it's ju just a midpoint. Um, and so in theory, that's where the balance point is. Um, many readings you're going to find are going to be either excessive or deficient. And that's really what you're looking for. You, you don't normally find a very well balanced individual. Um, so each point bears a direct relationship to specific anatomical structures or physio physiological function of the body by means of the meridian system. Um, Simon referred to it as, as um, fiber optics. I think cell phone technology is, is probably another example. We have a hardwire system, our nervous system, which would be like the old bell line, but we also have cell phones. People can't tell you how that voice comes to their cell phone. They don't know how it does, but they know it does. It's energy that is transmitted and it shows up. Our body is exactly the same. We have a system that allows energy to travel through, so we can use it. There again, very simple how, they, uh, how it's applied and what it's doing. <clears throat> Back into that again. So two things are going to happen when you do your testing. Um, one is going to be that you're going to have overstimulation. Um, all right, because the skin would change over, the, oh, so it would change over the span of the probe. So as you put your probe on and you either get a, a drop, in some rare occasions you'll actually get an increase, but it's, it's a very rare situation that you'll run into that. Uh, first condition will be defined by an indicator balance. The latter condition will be defined by an indicator drop. Okay. Uh, that again talks about the medication aspect of how we'll discover that. Uh, the drop we discussed already. Um, 
So there's, you know, you're not alone, I guess is really what this slide is saying to you. Uh, as much as you're on the leading edge, there's, there's many, many practitioners are using it. Not so many in North America, but certainly in, in other parts of the world, it's, it's quite commonplace for a practitioner to use this type of uh, information. Um, and this is just a little um, mechanical illustration of what a, a drop would be all about. We don't need to get into that. Um, back into the lower aspects of indicator drop again. I'm just going through this quickly because we've actually discussed it. Here's a chart that I have and I can give you guys an uh, electronic copy of that if you want. And it just it lists all of your points. It's handy, it's easy to work with. Um, same thing for the foot, we don't generally use there. And I think I can probably start by there because now we're getting into um, information about how we, information travels. And I don't think we need to go there at this point in time. So that's the basics of, of AMA testing. It's so simple, even I can do it. <laughs>